Welcome to another day of our scripture reading and scripture studies. Today we're going to be reading from the book of Jubilees, chapter 4, verse around verse 12, all the way through to the end of the chapter, and also Genesis chapter 5. Now I'm going to back up a few verses into our previous study, because I have uh, made, if you, if you notice here, uh, I have made like a family tree, a biblical family tree, starting with Adam and Eve at the top here. So we know the story of Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel. And as you see here, I've got Cain and Abel coming from uh, Adam and Eve. And as you can see here in this, in this family tree, I've got black lines connecting people and I've got little red lines like here connecting people. The black lines connect parents to children. The red lines connect husbands to wives. So we know that the first son that Adam and Eve had was Cain or Cain. And we know that the second son that they had was Abel or Avel. Now I say first son and second son specifically because I know that there are many times in the scriptures, and we're going we're gonna to run into this a lot, where it only mentions the males. It only mentions the fathers and the sons and so forth. It doesn't mention the daughters. And in, in, we read this in many parts of the scripture in regards to counting uh, the census and, and so on and so forth. A lot of times the women or the daughters were not counted. Only the, only the fathers and the sons were counted. So we know for sure that Cain was the first son and that Abel was the second son. We don't know for sure whether there were, there were any daughters in between Cain and Abel. But if you were to look up here in the book of Jubilees, now if I were to just scroll back to the beginning of chapter 4, it says here that after Cain and Abel, there was a daughter by the name of Awan. Okay, so here we got a daughter's name. There was Cain, Abel, and Awan. So let me just direct your attention as well down here to the family tree. So we got Cain, we got Abel, and we got Awan being the daughter of Adam and Eve. After Awan, it says in the book of Jubilees that Shet or Seth was born to Adam and Eve. And after Shet or Seth, there was another daughter whose name was Azura. And so if we were to read up here, the part that I'm highlighting, and in the sixth week, again, this is the week of years, uh, he begat his daughter Azura. So here I depicted it in a pictorial form down here. Adam and Eve had Cain, Abel, Awan, Seth, and Azura. Now it also says, again, if we go back a little bit into last, uh, last study that we had, that Cain and Abel also had nine other sons, okay? Right here. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she bare yet nine sons. So yet nine sons tells me there are another nine sons apart from Cain, Abel, and Seth. So Cain, Abel, and Seth are the first three sons. Here I got son four, son five, son six, son seven, son, son eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Again, this is substantial because we've got twelve sons from Adam and Eve. Doesn't this sound familiar? We have 12 sons of the sons of Yaakov or Jacob. We got 12 sons of Israel, 12 tribes of Israel, 12 disciples of the Messiah. Very interesting, very, very important. And these all connect together as well. Cain, Avel, Shet, okay, Seth. Let's go back up here to the book of Jubilees, and we're going to read where we left off last time, right here. And in the seventh jubilee, in the third week, again, weeks of years, not weeks of days, Enos took Noam, his sister, to be his wife. Okay, I'm just going to stop there, okay? Because if we go down here, Seth took Azura, his sister, to be his wife, and Enos took Noam, his sister, to be his wife, okay? So Enos and Noam are brother and sister, it says very clearly here that Enos took Noam, his sister, to be his wife. And she bare him a son. And in the third year of the fifth week, he, ca he called his name Canaan. So here we got Enos 
and his sister Noam bearing Canaan. Go back up here. And at the close of the eighth jubilee, Canaan took Mualeleth, his sister, to be his wife. So here we got, again, more information. We got Mualeleth, who is the sister of Canaan. Now, before we get too far into this, let's go over to the book of Genesis. And just let's kind of get caught up here within, in the book of Genesis, chapter 5. This is the book of the generations of Adam, or Adam. In the day that God created man, he made him in God's likeness. He created them, fee, male and female. Uh, again, uh, look at this, how man here, the word man, the word man here is defined as male and female. Now, again, this is not the case. This is not, every, it's not the case in every place in, in the scriptures, but it does make it clear that it is the case here. And he blessed them. On the day they were created, he named them Adam. He named them Adam. Okay. Again, very interesting. He named them Adam. Adam lived 130 years and became the father of a son in his own likeness after his own image and named him Seth. Okay. Again, we're going up here, uh, referring back to the family tree here. We got Adam and Eve and we got Seth being his son. The days of Adam after he became the father of Seth or Shate were 800 years and he, and he became the father of other sons and daughters. Now, here in the book of Genesis, we have more of an accounting of the ages of the patriarchs, the age of Adam, how long he lived after he had the son. Now, we don't have these details in the book of Jubilees, but we have other details that we do not have in the book of Genesis such as details of exactly what year, not so much the age of Adam, but the year, the years in which these events happened. Here we go. Verse 4. The days of Adam after he became the father of Shate, Seth, were 800 years, and he became the father of other sons and daughters. Now, here we see other sons and daughters, okay? It doesn't give us any details. Well, we get these details in the book of Jubilees, the other sons and daughters, okay? The other sons and daughters were the other nine sons and the daughters being specifically Awan and Azura. Now, I would assume there were a lot of other daughters that were born to Adam and Eve, although they weren't mentioned. And there's reasons why they don't mention certain daughters, maybe because there wasn't there was not any need to mention them. There was a need to mention Awan because he was the wife of Cain and Azur because he was the wife of Seth or Shate. Verse 5, all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, then he died. Okay, so let's scroll down, continuing with Genesis chapter 5, verse 6. Shate or Seth lived 105 years, then he became the father of Enosh. So here we go again at the... Uh, uh, family tree here. We got Seth became the father of Enosh. Now in the book of Genesis, it doesn't tell us who Seth, Seth's wife was or the mother of Enosh was. In the book of Jubilees, it says it is Azura, Seth's sister. Seth lived after he became the father of Enosh 807 years and became the father of other sons and daughters. All the days of, of Seth were 912 years, then he died. Enosh lived 90 years and became the father of Canaan. Okay, here we go. Here we go again. Uh, we got Enosh down here in the family tree. Um, with uh, We got Enosh being the father of Canaan, but we do not have any more information about who Canaan's mother was or Enosh's um, wife. Okay, let me just zoom in here a little bit so it's easier to see. Up here again, Enos lived after he became the father of Canaan, 815 years, and he became the father of other sons and daughters. Okay, now we know from the book of Jubilees that the one of the other daughters was Muelalith, okay, which we already read about in the book of Jubilees. Uh, but it says here, other sons and daughters. Now we don't know um, much more we don't know about what the others who the other sons were we don't know 
Now, we don't know who the other sons were. We know that there was Canaan and there was Mu'alalath, but we don't know about anybody else. Okay, so again, it only names the people of interest. Okay, so back up here. All the days of Enos were 905 years, then he died. Canaan lived 70 years and became the father of Mahalalel. Canaan lived after he became the father of Mahalalel, 840 years and became the father of other sons and daughters. All the, and all the days of Canaan were 910 years and then he died. So here we go again down here. We got Canaan who became the father of Mahalalel. Okay. Now we also know by the book of Jubilees that he, one of the other sons that he became the father of is Rashuyel. Okay, now the book of Genesis again doesn't tell us that, but we got that information in the book of Jubilees. So let's go over to the book of Jubilees, pick up where we left off here. Mahulalath, uh, the wife of Canaan, she bare him a son in the ninth Jubilee in the first week, in the third year of this week, and she calls, she called, and he called his name Mahalalel. And in the second week of the tenth Jubilee, Mahalalel took unto him to wife Dina, the daughter of Barakiel, the daughter of his father's brother, and she bare him a son in the third week in the sixth year, and he called his name Yared. For in his days the angels of the Lord descended on the earth. So Yared means to come down, means to descend. Those who are named the watchers, or as the book of Hebrews calls them, the great cloud of witnesses, the watchers, that they should instruct the children of man, that they should do judgment and uprightness on the earth. And in the 11th Jubilee, Yared took to himself a wife, and her name was Baraka, the daughter of Rashuyal, the daughter of his father's brother. Okay, so here we go again. Now let's look at, again at the, um, the family tree here. So we got Mahalalel who took Dina, the daughter of Barakiel, to be his wife, and they had Yared. Now, we don't have any information about who Barakiel was. Okay, now this is where it gets a little bit, we don't know. Uh, it's, it, here, here we lose details here. Uh, who was Barakiel? We don't know, um, but we do know that Barakiel uh, was the father of Dina, who was the wife of Mahalalel, who had, who had Yared. And Yared took Baraka, the daughter of Rashuyal, to be his wife. Okay, now let's go back over to the book of Genesis. Let's go over up here and catch up a little bit. Okay, so Mahalalel lived 65 years, then, be, then became the father of Yared. Mahalalel lived after he became the father of Yared, 830 years, and became the father of other sons and daughters. Okay, now, again, it doesn't tell us anything about who those other sons and daughters were, but in the book of Jubilees, we're going to get to it in just a minute here, that we know that one of the sons of Mahalalel was Donel. 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 All of the days of Mahalalel were 895 years, then he died. Yared Yare lived 162 years, then became the father of Enoch, or Hanok. Okay. Uh, Enoch, Enoch, as we say in English, or Hanok, as uh, it is in the original Hebrew. So here we go. Um, Yared, his wife Baraka, had Hanok. Okay, let's go over to uh, Book of Jubilees. Pick up where we left off here. Okay, so in the fourth week, this is where we left off right here. In the fourth week of this jubilee, she bare him a son in the fifth week. Again, we got to keep in mind, this is not weeks of days. This is weeks of years. In the fourth year of the jubilee, 
and he called his name Hanok. And he was the first among men that are born on earth to learn writing, who learned writing. Okay? Okay, here he is. I mean, this is something we don't know. This is a very interesting point here, that Hanok, Enoch, was the first one to actually be literate. And knowledge and wisdom, and so he learnt writing, and knowledge and wisdom, and who wrote down the signs of heaven according to the order of their months in a book that men might know the seasons of the years according to the order of their separate months. Okay, so when it says here he wrote down the signs of heaven according to the order of their months, okay, that is talking about you know the signs of heaven is like the moon, you know, the sun, the stars, the signs of heaven according to their months, okay? So it was Hanok, it was Enoch, who was the first one to make a calendar. He was the first one to write, to be literate. He was, uh, he learned knowledge and wisdom. He was a very interesting man, okay? And it says here that men might know this, the seasons of the years according to the order of their separate months, and he was the first to write a testimony, okay? To write a testimony. Here we go. He was the first to write a testimony. What does that mean, testimony? A covenant, okay? So he was the one that actually wrote the first covenant, <laughs> the first testament, the first testimony. It was Henok. It was Enoch, okay? And he testified to the sons of men, among the generations of the earth and recounted the, the weeks of the jubilees and made known to them the days of the years and, and set in order the months and recounted the, the Sabbaths of years, the Shabbats of years, as we made them known to him. Okay, As we, being the angels again, you got to keep in mind, uh, in the book of Jubilees, it is uh, the angels uh, who are speaking here. And what was and what will be, he saw in a vision of his sleep. It was a dream. So the book of Enoch, the book of Hanok, is all about uh, the first calendar. It's about Enoch, Enoch teaching men about days and months and years and seasons and such. And also, it is a record of his visions or his dreams that he had as he slept. Okay? It's a dream journal. As it will happen to the children of men throughout their generations until the day of judgment. Okay. Oh, now this is a very, very powerful claim right here because um, the day of judgment didn't happen yet. We didn't have the great day of judgment yet. So what is written in the book of Enoch? So what is written in the book of Enoch, according to this, is the whole history of mankind from the days of Enoch until the day of judgment. So we can find in the book of Enoch prophecies concerning this day and the future that, that, we'll, that we will face, the future that we will go through. Very interesting. He saw and understood everything, okay? <laughs> Very powerful. And wrote his testimony wrote his testimony, and placed the testimony on earth for all the children of men and for their generations. And in the twelfth jubilee, in the seventh week thereof, he took to himself a wife, and her name was Edna. Again, we don't get this information in the book of Genesis. Edna was the wife of Enoch, or Henoch, the daughter of Danel. So here we got Danel. Uh, go down here again, Danel is the son of Mahalalel. So, Hanok took Edna, the daughter of Donel, to be his wife, okay? It says up here, the daughter of his father's brother. And in the sixth year in this week, she bare him a son, and he called his name Methuselah. Very significant name, because Methuselah means his death shall bring. And we're going to find out later that it is indeed his death 
that brought the flood. Okay. Chanok, Enoch knew this. That's why he named his son Methuselah, because he, he knew that the day that Methuselah dies, the flood will, will happen on the earth. Okay, very powerful. He, he, the, even the names of Chanok's children were prophetic. And he was, moreover, with the angels of God these six jubilees of years. Six jubilees, again, six times 50 years, 300 years, and, he, and they showed him everything which is on the earth and in the heavens, the rule of the sun, and he wrote down everything. And he testified to the watchers, to the great cloud of witnesses, who had sinned with the daughters of men. For these had begun to unite themselves so as to be defiled, we were talking about sexual intimacy here, with the daughters of men. I used to have a problem with the idea that an angel could actually have sex with a, with a human, a woman. Until I began to think about it a little bit more and began to study the scriptures a little bit more, and I, I noticed that in the book of Hebrews, it talks about how the angels are just like humans. It, there are many times it says that you entertain angels without even knowing it because you're you're kind you you are hospitable to other people that you think are just people but they're not just people they're they are angels so for some reason some angels have been granted human bodies and if they have human bodies i would assume they do have human organs too including sexual organs and henok and enoch testified against them all against the angels that defiled themselves with women, and, and he was taken from amongst the children of men. Henok, Enoch, was taken, as it says in the book of Genesis, and we conducted him into the Garden of Eden in majesty and honor. And, be, and behold, there he writes down the condemnation and judgment of the world and all the wickedness of the children of men. And on account of it, God brought the waters of the flood upon all the land of Eden. For there he was, for there he was set a sign, and that he should testify against all the children of men, that he should recount all the deeds of the generations until their condemnation. And he burnt the incense of the sanctuary, even sweet spices, acceptable before the Lord on the mount. Wow, do you know what this means? I mean, he knew the Torah before Moshe, before Moses even wrote the Torah. He knew the Torah before it was even written down. How would he, I mean, if not, how would he know about burnt incense and about the sweet spices that are acceptable uh, before the Lord on the mount? The mount, on the mount. Is this talking about the mount that Moshe went up to receive the Torah? The mountain? The mount that Moses went up to receive the Torah? This is extremely interesting. For the Lord has four places on earth. Okay? For the Lord has four places on earth. The Garden of Eden. So the Garden of Eden is on earth. In case you're wondering, the Garden of Eden is on earth. It's not heaven. It is on earth. The Mount of the East. And this mountain on which thou art this day, Mount Sinai. And Mount Zion, which will be sanctified in the new creation for a sanctification of the earth. Through it will the earth be sanctified from all its guilt and its uncleanness throughout the generations of the world. And in the 14th Jubilee, Methuselah took unto himself a wife, Edna, the daughter of Azriel. Okay, so here we got in the family tree here. Methuselah, with the red line connecting the spouses, Edna, the daughter of Azrael. The daughter of his father's brother. In the third week, in the first year of the week, he begat a son and called his name Lamech. Okay? Lamech. Now, before we get too far, let's catch up with, in the book of Genesis here. Uh, we go back to Yared. Yared lived, after he became the father of Enoch, Hanok, 800, 800 years, and he became the father of other sons and daughters. 
all of the days of Yared were 962 years, then he died. Enoch lived 65 years, then he became the father of Methuselah. So again, we've got different writing styles. The book of Genesis, we've got the age of the of the uh, of the of the fathers when they had the children in the book of jubilees we have the age of basically the earth when those children were born in in such and such of jubilee in such and such week in this jubilee talking about the actual date they were born as opposed to the age of their fathers when they were born after methuselah's birth Hanok walked with god for 300 years and became the father of more sons and daughters. All the days of Henoch were 365 years. Henoch, Enoch, walked with God, and he was not found, for God took him. This has got to be one of the most intriguing verses of the Bible. This has got to be one of the most intriguing verses you could read in the scriptures. That Enoch walked with God, and he was not. He was not found, for God took him. Can you imagine walking so close to God that God just snatches you away from the earth? Yeah, wow, that's awesome. Methuselah lived 487 years and became the father of Lamech. So here we got Enoch becoming the father of Methuselah, Methuselah becoming the father of Lamech. Methuselah lived after he became the father of Lamech 782 years and he became the father and became the father of other sons and daughters all the days of Methuselah were 969 years then he died Lamech lived 182 years then he became the father of a son <laughs> interesting it doesn't really name the son at this verse here but then it says he named him Noah, saying, This one will comfort us in our work and in the toil of our hands, caused by the ground which Yahuwah has cursed. Noah means comfort. That's why he named him his son Noah, because he said, This one will comfort us in our work and the toil of our hands, caused by the ground which Yahuwah has cursed. Here's, here's Lamech having Noah. Lamech lived after he became the father of Noah 595 years and he became the father of other sons and daughters. All the days of Lamech were 777 years, then he died. Noah was 500 years old, then Noah became the father of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Book of Jubilees. Start right here and in the 15th Jubilee in the third week, Lamech took to himself a wife, and her name was Betanos, the daughter of Barakiel. Okay, here we got some more detail, again, that Genesis does not give us. We've got Betanos, the daughter of Barakiel, the wife of Lamech. Back up here, the daughter of his father's brother, okay? So Lamech's father's brother was Barakail, and that's why we got Barakail up here, because Barakail was Methuselah's brother. Okay, back up here, the daughter of his father's brother. Okay, back up here, and in this week she bare him a son and call his name Noah, saying, This one will comfort me. For my trouble and all my work for the ground which the Lord has, cur has cursed. And at the close of the 19th Jubilee, in the seventh week, in the sixth year thereof, Adam died. Adam, Adam died. And all his sons buried him in the land of his creation. All his sons, being tw the twelve sons of Adam, buried him in the land of his creation. So where he was created... Where he came from, there he went back to, okay? As Yahuwah said himself, from dust you came from, and to dust you will return. And he was the first to be buried in the earth. He lacked 70 years of 1,000 years. For 1,000 years are as one day in the testimony of the heavens. And therefore, 
was written concerning the tree of knowledge on the day that you eat thereof, you shall die. For this reason, he did not complete the years of his of this day, the day here being a thousand years. Now, now we know where Peter got the idea for as with the Lord, for with the Lord, the, a day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day. It says, for he died during it. So he died during the day. He did not complete the day in which he was created because he died before the thousand year mark. At the close of this jubilee, Cain was killed after him in the same year. For his house fell upon him, and he died in the midst of his house. And he was killed by stones, for with a stone he had killed Avail. And by a stone he was killed in righteous judgment. Wow. Righteous judgment. So the Lord had vengeance upon Cain. He was killed in righteous judgment in the same way that he killed Avail. For this reason it was ordained on the heavenly tablets. With the instrument with which a man kills his neighbor, with the same shall he be killed. After the manner that he wounded him in the in like manner he in like manner shall they deal with him. Okay? Very, very important here to understand. This is what it says here. This is why it says in the Torah, you know, basically eye for eye, tooth for tooth. This is why it says, for the same way a person a man is killed, he shall be killed. Okay? Now, and it also says, the Lord says, vengeance is mine. So what happened was in the days of Yeshua, in the days of Jesus, people used that that scripture, you know, tooth, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, to take vengeance themselves instead of leaving it up to God to take vengeance, okay? So here we got a, a perfect example that God killed Cain in the same way he killed Abel because it says in the Torah, you know, that the same way that a man killed another man, shall he be killed, okay? So, so like Adam and Eve or nobody else took vengeance upon Cain. God himself took vengeance upon Cain. The house of stones that he built fell down upon him and killed him in the same way he killed Avail. Now, what happened was in the days of Yeshua, people were not letting God take vengeance. They were taking vengeance themselves instead of letting God take vengeance that's why Yeshua said, that's why Yeshua, that's why Jesus corrected them saying, you know, you've heard that it said eye for eye, tooth for tooth, you know, but I say to you, okay, he didn't say, he didn't negate that because that's an eternal principle. That's an eternal law. Jesus never overrode it. He never abrogated it. He just expounded upon it and said, no, no, you guys are taking this completely the wrong way. It's supposed to be vengeance is mine, says the Lord, okay? Very interesting. And we're going to get to that a little bit more in, as we read it in the scriptures. And in the 25th Jubilee, Noah took to himself a wife, and her name was Amzara, okay? Amzara, the daughter of Rachael, the daughter of his father's brother. Again, we've got a little bit more information here that the brother of Lamech was Rachael. And Rachael's daughter, Amzara, was Noah's wife, Noah's wife. And in the third year thereof, she bare him Shem. In the fifth year thereof, she bare him Ham. And in the first year, in the sixth week, she bare him Japheth. So, here we got at the end here, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. That concludes our study for today. Thanks for sticking around. I know this is kind of like the genealogies are kind of uh, kind of hard to get through, but hey, when you really want to dig into the DNA of of the scriptures, this is very very important to understand. So once again, thanks again for watching. I'll see you soon.